Hi everyone, happy Monday. It's a snow day here in Bellevue. Let's see, actually, I think I'm gonna see if I can show you outside. Lots of snow. Lots of things are canceled and closed today too. I usually, um, on Mondays and Wednesdays, I do a workout class called Bar 3. And I woke up this morning to a cancellation notice. So I guess um, I can't eat as much as I was hoping to today. <laughs> Anyways, I wanted to come on here quickly and just show off um, some of the new pieces that I picked up in Mexico. I just, well, last week, I've been home now, I guess, for nine days. I got home two Saturdays ago and just had a wonderful time in the sun. I usually go, as a lot of you know, I usually go to Europe in January. So a girlfriend of mine got married, so I changed my plans this year and ended up in Mexico, which isn't a bad thing seeing what you just saw outside and getting a sun break. Um, and, you know, one of sort of the gloomiest months here in North America, or at least in Seattle. Um, and uh, anyway, so I put on for this occasion this new dress that I bought in this town called Uchitan, which is in Oaxaca. And I don't know how familiar everyone is with Mexico, but Oaxaca is a southwestern state. And um, the reason why I originally went to Oaxaca over four years ago is because Frida Kahlo, the surrealist, very famous surrealist painter from Mexico, she adopted her style from this state and particularly from the region where Uchitan is at because her mother was from that region and it's a very matriarchal society and so when I say that I mean the women are in charge of really everything. Um, they control the businesses, the finances, the men who are fishers or farmhands, they literally come home, hand the money to the woman. She takes care of the finances. If they want to go buy something, if they want to get drunk, if they want to buy cigarettes, they contact the, her and she hands over the money to them. And even in and even in Uchitan, the women appear more dominant. They're definitely bigger, <laughs> whereas the women, the men are a little bit more um, wispy. Anyway, so I have to show you this dress because the detail is actually right here. It's all um, hand embroidered. And they're very famous for the gold and gold plated filigree jewelry that um, I'm wearing too. And so if you're a bride from Oaxaca, from the Isthmus where Uchitan is at, um, you'll be wearing lots of this gold jewelry. In fact, if, it's, if I was told that um, sort of during old older days because a lot of them a lot of people wear the gold plated now but when it was actually all gold they would have um guards security at weddings to protect the women and their um their precious jewelry so these are a couple of the pieces this particular uh piece i actually got in Wa the city of oaxaca which is about a four-hour bus trip from uchitan um and it's this necklace is with coral jade um and then this of course is the hand filigree and um, they've embellished it instead of the gold tassels, the coral beads. And these earrings, likewise, um, which I particularly love. And these ones I did get in Uchitan. Um, what's kind of cool about them is that they've got these uh, gold, or excuse me, green bead details, which um, a lot of the pieces don't really have, honestly. So I kind of wanted to pick up something that's was a little bit different than what I saw in a lot of um, other different parts. But, um, and just a, just a note about this filigree jewelry, it's actually um, right now, so back in September, and some of you may remember this, back in September of 2017, um, this, the Oaxaca, and particularly the town of Uchitan and the Isthmus of Oaxaca was hit by an 8.1 magnitude earthquake, which some elements of the town are still in rubbles because of this earthquake. And I think they had about 32 people that were killed um, during the earthquake. And um, because of it, a lot of the artisans actually aren't creating art right now and creating the filigree pieces because they're helping to rebuild the city. Granted, it's a year and a half later, so a lot of it has been rebuilt, but the church has not. You still can't go into the main cathedral, main cathedral basilica. I'm using one of those words bad. But anyways, the main church, the market, where um, you would go to buy these pieces is still under construction. So the town actually has, they've taken the, the park and they've created that into the market. And a lot of ladies were, um, and I, I think I posted, I posted a video of me walking through the market in Uchitan. And you'll see a lot of the women are, 
are swishing away flies, which is normal in the mark in the meat part, right? But there was a lot of women who were um, selling the clothing and the embroidered pieces that were having to swat away flies, and they were quite annoyed by that because typically in their in their uh, normal market, the the I guess the the food objects and sort of the textile artisan objects are on different levels, so they don't have to worry about the flies. Anyways, something just to note. Um, so, and I'll just, a couple of other pieces that I picked up. So this is the same, actually I wore this to the Super Bowl party I went to yesterday. And actually I only brought out, oh, this one has the butterfly on it. But I have different, um, there's like some pendants are like drop pendants. Um, I've sold a couple already that were a little bit more extravagant in their details, but um, uh, they're just all really beautiful and intricate. So another, uh, while also in Oaxaca, one of the artisans that I, I found the first time I went, which like I said, was over 40 years ago. It's a woman, she's a de designer, and her name's Gabby um, Vil 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 Vilchez. And what she does, which I think is lovely, is that she um, also takes contemporary, or excuse me, traditional elements, which is the embroidery, which, as you can see from my dress, is something very typical to the style, but she has, so she has local women, she do the embroidery aspects of the jewels that she designs, but then incorporates them in more traditional um, designs that you and I and other more contemporary women um, of Mexico can wear. And they're just like exquisitely detailed and I'm probably putting this on the wrong side, and unique, like every single one is one of a kind. And what was kind of neat is like, I um, I went into her tayer, and um, hi Melissa. <laughs> I went into her atelier tayer, and um, all, these, all these young girls were, you know, assembling, doing the embroidery, um, taking pictures for, for Instagram, um, well, I was um, being shown all the new uh, styles, and this is actually one of the new styles, and they're exquisite and great either Valentine's Day for yourself or something that you can ask. A lot of the pieces that I'm showing you, actually, this is to note, a lot of the pieces that I'm showing you right now are not on the shop website, which is this, ch I didn't realize how much I had bought this trip until I came home and was completely overwhelmed with all that I need um, thanks. It is. <laughs> I do like it too. Um, with all the all the things that I have to add. So slowly, slowly. So I'm happy if anyone wants um, price detail. I can tell you that these ones are ninety eight dollars. Um, I'm happy to give any price details. What I've done with a lot of my customers um, who've done like sneak peeks or like done some first dibs type of shopping is um, just send PayPal invoices and just happy to send it. Kind of do it. Um, a more manual way, if that makes sense, but it's not manual at all because it actually saved me from taking pictures. <laughs> not that I don't love that work, <laughs> but I'll show you a couple more um, colors. Actually, let's do this here. I oh, see the thing with Facebook though is I, I get confused with how it mirrors. And this actually, I love this color. And then, oh, and then the teal. If you like teal and pink, oh my gosh, this might cause you to have a little mini heart attack. But anyways, they're just so pretty. And I think, and sometimes I think I say this and people think I'm crazy, that yes, I know there's a lot of sparkle, but I think they can be worn casually. Like you don't have to have some grand event to wear these. I mean, absolutely you can wear these out for happy hour. So don't be um, intimidated, I guess, by, by the sparkle. Um, so something else by Gabby, and I thought, oh, Jen, oh, these earrings too. So these are, I didn't get as many, I think some of you who've seen the shop might be familiar um, with this style that I might have already had in the shop. She did add sort of this druzy element, which I thought was really pretty, but I was showing off these yesterday because they kind of like the Patriots colors. Um, anyways, I, I wasn't really into the football game, but I figured if I had jewelry that matched some of the team <laughs> <laughs> uniforms that might be kind of cool um anyways and then so moving on with more of her pieces she has these lovely necklaces that are so you have to see the detail 
but I thought these would be so fun for Valentine's Day. And then, and I didn't, I didn't even open up this package. Let me open up a couple more just to show you some of the other colors. But the price points, um, the price points on these guys are 68, just so you have that detail. Oh, purple. I haven't shown very much purple. This is really pretty. But you can see like, you can see like the embellishment at the top, which is just like a little bit of crystal. In this case, there's a little bit like enamel turquoise and then all the hand pieces, and it's the same on each side, so they don't, they don't chance on um, detail, for sure. And then it's, a, a, these are glass crystals in the top, and just so you can see, it is adjustable, so there's elements, so it can be um, adjusted about, it looks like about two inches, two inches longer. Here, I'll put one on just so you can get a sense of, of the length, but they're really, really fun. Oh! Actually, let me put on the red one because I think it'll stand out better. Uh, this one I actually have gone, I've taken on a test drive. I wore it, I don't know, when did I wear it? You can see that's like, it's almost the perfect length. So they're sort of statement necklaces, but understated um, and definitely conversation pieces. Absolutely. And no one else will be wearing a necklace like this. You don't have to worry about that. And last piece by Gabby that I'm going to show you is um, this particular piece, and I still have a tag on it, which is unfortunate, but I think I sent the other one to have um, pictures taken of it, so I don't unfortunately have the other half. But um, but another sort of uh, something else, an, a folk, folk art that's famous in Oaxaca is um, wood art and hand-painted wood art. And you, I, I'm sure many of you have, have at least seen or seen um, pictures of animals that are made from wood and then sort of abstractly painted. And this is traditional to the area of Oaxaca. And so what Gabby does is she takes an element of that. Obviously this is an animal, it's a little heart, but it's carved from wood, hand carved from wood, and then hand painted with this design. Um, and it just showcases, again, tradition and contemporary together. And you can see how long these are and just kind of like a neat little, neat and, um, fun and unique uh, earring in a color, in bright colors. And I think I have some in blue, so there's different colors as well. Um, what else? Oh, last, because everyone loves Frida Kahlo, right? Oh, I did those Mexico boxes. Everyone, well, there was like three people who were like, eh, Frida's okay. But anyways, one of the pieces by Gabby, she, uh, she does have some pieces that actually ha have the image of Frida on it. And so this was one of the pieces that I got. Um, there's actually a couple bracelets. I got some, uh, but they're so cool because it's so detailed. And this is like truly a cup, but you can see like it's all hand beaded. That's a crystal. And then if you're like a Frida maniac like I am, you just like are so happy every time you see her face. And um, the little, the little, um, enamel detail is actually one of her self-portraits that she did that um, has been put behind resin. But, and, and just so you know, the price points on um, the cuffs like this, and I have a blue one and I have this, and they're all one of a kind, of course. These ones are, are 88. And so last thing I got in Oaxaca, well, not the last thing, but the last sort of different style I got in Oaxaca um, were these really fun, and I picked up about, I didn't pick up that many, maybe like 15, and they're all different styles, so clearly all one of a kind. And these, um, this piece is actually a gourd. I'm going to put it on. It's actually a gourd, so it's all natural. And then it, it has um, corn husks. And it's an artisan that lives outside of Oaxaca. It's actually a man artisan. But... Um, I just loved, I loved the carving, I loved the detail, I loved the fact that I had never seen anything like this before. And um, anyways, I thought you guys would all sort of appreciate the unique aspect, but, it, but I still thought like, well, it's super unique. There was definitely a classic element to it that I thought um, could be worn with a lot of different things. Um, so this is definitely something you could throw on with jeans and it makes a statement all at the same time, but absolutely, uh, I guess doesn't overpower, right? It's really fun. I like these ones. 
And let's see. Okay, just a couple more things because I have been talking for, I think, 14 minutes. Um, oh, so Puebla. So my trip, I, was, I started in Cabo for the wedding, and then I flew to Mexico City, took a bus to Tosco, which is famous for its silver, and I did not bring out anything from, I was going to show off a ring from Tosco, actually. Let's see if I can pull it quickly. Oh, here it is. Well, this actually isn't it, but I'll show it anyways. Um, so into the, the, the uh, Seattle, or excuse me, Seattle, the silver mecca of Mexico, which used to have mines. Um, however, all the mines are closed at this point. So they still continue to have the best silversmiths in Mexico. In fact, um, Tiffany's used to have their silver pieces done in Tosco by the silversmiths there. But their mines have since closed. There's one they're hoping to reopen, but it's not open. So a, a lot of the silver that the silversmiths use in Tosco, they actually get from Monterrey, which is a different town more north of Mexico. Um, anyways, but the pieces are still amazing. And I'm not showing you one of sort of the more uh, elaborate pieces, but I did get to go into the home of one of the families that um, they're second generation silversmiths. Um, and um, I, I bought some of their pieces, which weren't traditional in their design, but I still thought really um, unique. So this particular ring and a lot of the rings that I have are adjustable and this one's no different. Um, just had a really neat contemporary sort of look to it, and it has the lapis lazuli, um, which a lot of people love. And um, I just thought it was kind of unique, which I think we sort of understand that's kind of my point and why I choose a lot of this stuff. Um, but anyway, so Cabo to Tosco. From Tosco, I um, went to Puebla and um, absolutely fell in love with that town. Uh, some of you have heard of the Battle of Puebla, which of course it happened right there in the town of Puebla. So I was able to go to the battlefield as well um, when I was taking a little break from shopping <laughs> and, and eating candy because it's also known for its confections. So there's, oh, there's this whole street lined with candy shops. Anyways, really fun to go to. But when I was in the market one morning, um, I saw some beautiful beadwork. And when I started talking to the woman, um, I learned her name was Naomi and she was the creator of all the pieces and she brings her family. They're from an indigenous town that's five hours away from Puebla. So every weekend they come to Puebla to sell her, her beaded jewelry. And she brings her two kids and her husband and they set everything up. And um, anyway, so this is actually, I don't know if I should take off. Let me take off some of this stuff just so I can show off her piece as well because they deserve a Naomi deserves that. What was fun about talking to her is that um, when she was talking to her kids and husband, she would talk in her native dialect. So it was fun to hear that. And then when I was, you know, a, a lot of my artisans, how I try to keep in contact with them, if depending on, you know, if they're not sort of a, a commercial, some, some of the sort of bigger designers with, uh, they sort of have a commercial presence that's so pretty easy to, to keep in contact with them and see their new collections. I would say a lot of my artisans though, I have to talk to via WhatsApp over and we make selections over pictures and anyways, so with Naomi, I loved her pieces and I wanted to stay in contact with her and I was, and so we decided to exchange WhatsApp information, but she um, doesn't read or write. So her young daughter, who is probably 10, had to, um, be the scribe. And then so I asked her, I said, well, who am I going to be talking, you know, because she's like, here's my phone number. I'm like, well, how am I going to communicate? And she's like, my husband takes care of it. So anyways, so this is one of the bid necklaces that um, Naomi does. And this was another one too, I thought with the snow outside and it just being a little, little gray, might be fun to show, show off some colors. Um, but um, there's just so much work and she's teaching her daughter now the trade, which I thought was kind of, which was kind of neat. And um, it was just fun, like, hanging out with them and getting to know their family a little bit. Um, but pieces like this, just so you have a sense, are $48. So it's, they're super affordable, and they're very elegant and just um, statements in their own right. Um, other little beaded pieces I picked up while in, Pe while in Puebla are these, like, little earrings. And I have a whole array of colors, which I'll put some pictures of the other colors. But what I loved about them, and look, even the back, so they continue the beading onto the back. I just thought they were so 
lovely, so intricate, and wonderful price point. So the price point on something like this is, is 18. And then last, I'm just gonna show two more, two more necklaces. Oh, you know what, actually, I'm not gonna show these. I'm gonna show something else from Puebla because since we're already talking about Puebla. So Puebla, another thing they're famous for besides the battle and besides confections is their Talavera tile. So Talavera tile is um, a clay tile that they put enamel on and they hand paint. And um, you'll see them sort of on the facades of buildings, um, sometimes inside buildings, but just beautiful, just beautiful. And uh, traditionally, a lot of them are blue and white. And so I was able to find some earrings that represented the Talavera tile. So these are all hand painted in Puebla. They actually send them once they're once they have the detail of the painting on the on the clay. They actually send it to Tosco, Tosco and they get them encased in silver by the silversmiths there. So I love that because it sort of represents two places I was there and and um, master craftsmanship of two different places that I visited. And just a couple, let me just show you a couple of the other designs. And these ones I have, but they're bright and really detailed. And obviously each one is um, one of a kind because they're each hand painted. Um, and then here's one with the yellow. So getting ready for spring. Not that this one's the blue, or excuse me, red. But you can see the little detail. And while the blue is traditional, this is the artist's just um, sort of um, being creative and abstract with with the um, with their painting. Anyways, I think that's a good place to to just start. I'll um, I have some pieces in the shop already, but like I said, if there's anything that piques your interest or you want more information, or if you're like, oh Jen, that's cool, but do you have something in a different color? Let me know because if I was to turn this screen around, <laughs> what you would see is a big jewelry ball. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what I do not lack <laughs> are options. So uh, happy, happy to answer any questions. And um, thanks for tuning in all, 20 mi all 22 minutes, my goodness. Um, and um, yeah, just feel free to comment or send questions. Um, and I'll, um, you know what, I'm gonna post, I'm gonna do a blog about the women of Uchitan because I just think that culture is really unique, um, particularly for, you know, conservative Mexico because they're uh, they actually celebrate having a gay child there too is, is also celebrated which is also something sort of um, unique uh, anyway so I'll do a blog post on that and I have to see if I posted that picture of the market of Uchitan because that's kind of interesting to look at and then I think to the um, Naomi and when I was meeting her in Puebla I think I did a personal Facebook post on that but I didn't do one in the biz page so I will I will share that with you guys too because it's kind of fun to see the faces of these artisans because they're all so remarkable and they all just have beautiful stories as to why they do it and it's it's even better when you get to meet their families and um, it makes you want want to support them even more. Anyways, have a good rest of your Monday. I actually have a little appointment at five thirty, so I'm gonna I don't think wearing. <laughs> A dress from Mexico is going to cut it, so I think I'll go change and uh, get ready for that. Anyways, thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.